how pissed off would you get if you figure out that this mole that you had on your back for years is now cancerous and can potentially kill you in six months? That's scary, right? In this episode, I'll tell you all about different types of skin cancers, how can we diagnose them early, who really gets them, and how to prevent them. So stay tuned! Hello my friend, welcome back to the show. This is Chatterdox. I'm Dr. Tor, I'm an internal medicine physician. I talk about a lot of different stuff in medicine and health, and I do believe that learning about health does not have to be boring. So thank you for being here, thank you for watching my show, and if you like my content, please consider subscribing and turning on a notification so you will never miss anything. Skin cancer or abnormal growth of your skin cells that just like any other cancer could be potentially life-threatening usually happens in sun-exposed areas, but it can also happen in non-sun-exposed areas of your body. It has three main common types, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and melanoma, that each of them arise from a different cell type of your skin. There are also other different, more uncommon ones that we're not going to talk about today. As I said, skin cancer usually happens in the areas of your skin that are sun exposed, like your face, lips, nose, ears, the scalp, neck, back of your hands, legs in the women who like to dress sexy or men who always wear shorts. But it can also happen on the areas of your skin that never sees the sunlight, like your toenails or underneath your fingernails or palm of your hand or even in your genital area yeah my friend sorry but the skin of your genitals can also get cancer that's just disgusting skin cancer can involve people of any age or skin tone including people with darker complexions squamous cell and basal cell carcinoma usually happens in sun exposed areas and melanoma can happen anywhere in your body what are the symptoms of skin cancer and how do they look different skin cancer types come in different variety of shapes and colors for example for example, basal cell carcinoma or BCC usually looks like a pearly or waxy bump, a brown scar-like lesion, or a bleeding and scabbing sore. Squamous cell carcinoma or SCC may appear as a red firm nodule or a flat lesion with scale and crust. And melanoma can look like a large brownish spot with dark speckles, a mold that changes in color and size, or a painful lesion that itches and burns or may bleed. And at the end of the day, it's really impossible to know if you really have skin cancer and if you do what type without a skin biopsy. Now, why the hell would you get skin cancer to begin with? Skin cancer, or basically any cancer, arises when there's an error or a mutation in the DNA of your cells and then they start growing and replicating out of control and they make a mass and then they can travel throughout your body, grow masses in other places too. Now much of the damage to your skin cells come from the UV or ultraviolet light that come from the sun or tanning beds. This is a huge risk factor for skin cancers. But there's also other stuff that can cause skin cancer like toxic or carcinogen skin products, having a weak immune system, or sometimes viral infections like human papillomavirus or HPV. Now, what are the risk factors of getting a skin cancer? Number one, having fair skin. Although that I told you any skin color or tone can get skin cancer, and that's true, but when you're so white, it means that you have less pigments or melanin in your skin. The melanin in the skin is a factor that can protect your skin cells and DNA from the UV rays of the sunlight. So if you're blonde or redheaded and you're super attractive, this is a one bad luck that you have in life. Number two, having history of one or more blistering sunburns. Number three, and I think this is the 10th time I'm saying this, excessive sun exposure, especially without sunscreen or protective clothing, or spending a lot of time in tanning beds. Again, my ladies, you become super smoking hot, but to what price? Number four, moles. People with many or abnormal moles that are oftentimes called dysplastic are at higher risk of skin cancer. These moles are abnormally big or irregular and they look ugly. Number next, precancerous skin lesions. There's a lesion called actinic keratosis that can happen on the face, hands, or head of fair skin people who spend a lot of time in sun. These are rough scaly patches that can vary in color color from pink to brown and they put you at more risk of getting skin cancer. Number six, personal or family history of skin cancer. Number seven, a weakened immune system. People with HIV AIDS or people who are taking immunosuppressant medication are at higher risk. Number next, exposure to radiation. People who get radiation to treat eczema or acne are at higher risk for skin cancer. So you treat one condition but you get at the risk of another condition. That's how medicine usually works. And number last, exposure to certain substances like arsenic. But the 
biggest question is how do we prevent getting skin cancer? The biggest one that you can already predict if you're not as dumb as me is avoid the sun. Tips for that is limit your outdoor activities in the middle of the day like between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. when the sunlight is high. Even when the weather is cloudy and in winter there's a lot of UV radiation that your skin can absorb. Use sunscreens. A lot of sunscreens. No amount of sunscreen is too much. Sunscreen has a major role in preventing skin cancer. Use a broad spectrum sunscreen with SPF of at least 30 and wear it even on cloudy days. Apply it generously and renew every two hours or even faster if you're swimming or sweating a lot. Make sure to cover all your exposed skin including your face, your lips, tip of your ears, back of your hands and also your neck. Wear protective clothing. Sunscreens don't provide a complete protection from the UV light. So if you're in the sun for a long time, make sure to wear dark, tightly woven clothing that covers your arms and your legs. For your face, a baseball cap is good, but you know what's better? A broad hat like this. Although you might look stupid like me. So it is both a sunblock and a cock block. Also don't forget about sunglasses that block both UVA and UVB. Avoid tanning beds for the reasons that I just told you. You're beautiful the way you are. Beware of sun sensitizing medication. Medication like antibiotics like tetracycline, doxycycline, pain medication like ibuprofen or Motrin, some heart medications like amiodarone can make your skin more sensitive to sun. So ask your doctor slash pharmacist about this side effect and if there is, take extra precautions. And last but not the least, examine your skin regularly for any new growth or changes in existing moles, freckles, bumps and birthmarks. If you have a mole or lesion that has been stable for years and now all of a sudden you see that it's getting bigger, it's getting more irregular in shape, it's getting funny in color or it starts to itch and bleed all of a sudden, please make sure to have your doctor check it. You may need a biopsy of that lesion. Also make sure to check your whole body thoroughly including your face, chest, back, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Don't forget your palms and soles and between your fingers and toes and also in your genital area or even between your buttocks. If you have a life partner, you can ask them to do the favor for you. And if you don't, good luck with the mirror. Face, lips, mouth, nose. No, not mouth. What was the beginning of my sentence? Whatever. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value, please smash that like button, as everyone say. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and watch my other videos right here or here. I always forget. Yeah, watch my other videos here.